Well, welcome back, YouTubers, and this is part two of the DIY porting on the Vortex 062 casting. Now, we're gonna be working on the exhaust side. I'm gonna flip it over, but first, this is my tribute to NASCAR, moonshining, know your history. All right, so here is the exhaust side we're gonna do. These are two finished ports to have in the middle. You have to do this one and this one. But we're gonna do one. I'm gonna concentrate on this one right here. All right, I have the gasket up here, and unlike the intake port, I'm not gonna bother to mark the areas for this particular guy. And the reason for that is when you start porting your exhaust, you have to take in account what kind of headers you're gonna run, where the headers match up and your gasket placement. And for this one, it is gonna be using round port headers. And these are the gaskets that match up to his exhaust, which means there's nothing I can really port and make bigger in here. So we're going to have to do all our work inside the chamber because it doesn't do you any good to port bigger than your headers because all that is gonna do is just cause turbulence and a whole type of other problems that's gonna degrade your performance. So for this one, we're gonna do all the porting on the inside. All right, for this guy, I'm gonna use Big Daddy. And I'm gonna get right here on top of the valve guides. I'm gonna take it back the same way I did the intake. And I'll show you another side real quick. All right, so here is a finished exhaust port. You notice that they're more smooth than the intake and that is because you don't want any carbon sticking to your exhaust. You want it all to move out. You don't want it to build up. And the reason why, because when it builds up, it can get stuck in your valves and they can degrade your performance. So what we want to do is just like we did to the intake, we want to trim all this back and work on the bowl blending. So that way the air has a nice straight shot going out. All right, I want to make one more point clear before I move on. Now keep in mind that this head is upside down. It really is the other way. So this is going to be the ceiling. This is going to be the floor. And your pistons are going to be right here. Now when you're taking metal out of these, and this goes for the intake and it goes for the exhaust, is you do not want to touch the floor. And the reason why you don't want to do that is because when it pushes the air out, air wants to move in one direction. So it's going to push out this way, hit a curve, and come out. So if you take out metal right here, you're doing nothing except getting it closer to the water passageways in your head. And it can actually cause more turbulence and it can be detrimental to your airflow. So if this right here, you may make it flow optimal, you would move these bolt holes down and move your headers up. If you look at any heads, go to AFR, look at their website, and you'll see a lot of these heads, LT1 heads, they'll say the exhaust ports have been moved up. And that is because the air wants to go in a straight line. So we're not going to touch this. We're going to do all our pouring, like I said before, right in here. Hold on to your butts. All right, there's our first cut. Now, if you look at it, it looks like I took a lot out, but I really didn't. When this thing is all, you know, dark and, you know, abyss looking, it really seems to uh, open up when you put the light in it. But I didn't open up that much. All I did was take out the casting lines. You see there's still some right here. So I, this is what I said before my marker is. I'm going to take out these casting lines just to where the casting lines come out. Take one out there. And I'm going to take one out there. And next we're going to go up top. And I'll show you where I cut this, right where I cut it. And I'm going to vacuum this shit out. You see all this is the material we took out already. Call me Dr. Port. That was super corny, I know. Okay, just like all the other ports, we're going to do some bowl blending. And you can see right there, a nice little harsh line. We're gonna take all this back, of course, all the way around. So, let me do that real quick. That's the first cut. We did the, uh, the main cut. And it's important to note when you're doing this stuff to these uh, ports, you don't want to just round things off. You know, you don't want to be like, mm, I'm just getting shiny metal. I'm just kind of making it all look like it's kind of blended. 
you want to open it up, but you don't want to go too far. You do not want to hit any of your seats where the valve hits. That's very important. So now I'm going to go back to the drill. I'm going to blend all this in. Oh, that is next. All right, man, she's looking nice and pretty. And you can see right here where I've taken the casting lines out. I've blended everything very nice. I've been very cautious not to touch any of the valve seats. Now, uh, I did put a note in another video, but if you haven't seen that video, these heads do not have hardened valve seats that are inserted in here. So you can go a little bit further out to the edge. Now, when you have an aluminum head that's going to have hardened valve seats, you have to approach this a lot differently. All right, now I'm going to go in here and just chase all this, smooth it up, blend it back, make sure this little short turn right here is nice and smooth, and then I'm going to go to the sanding rolls and polish this up. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a secret. This is really how you get things smooth. Ready? Not really. So what we're going to do now, now these little short things that you get in a kit from Summit, right here, this is about bullshit right here. Because here's the reason why. You can't make it back in here with this. You're going to start hitting the sides, and if you are on the top side, going in where the uh, valve, valve seats are, you're going to nick a valve seat and be like, oh fuck, now I need a valve job. So you always want to get a longer one. And I get a longer one and I've cut this a little bit shorter. That way it has more stability for the exhaust. And you really don't need anything for the intake side because you don't want to use sanding roll with an intake. You can just do things like this with old carbide bits. And that's the kind of grit you want on the carbide bit side for your intake. You don't want your intake to be smooth because you want it to atomize the air better. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to use this small one first right here and go in the edges where I can't get to with my carbide bit. You can use a whole bunch of carbide bits and get smaller ones to get in there. But really that little section right there, you can take a sand and roll and it'll just clean it out. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll show you the results. Now I'm going to the fatter roll to get inside the bowl a little more, not in the tight crevices to get everything else. All right, we got this side done. All we gotta do now is flip the head over and go out from this way and the exhaust is done. Now I have very, very little work to do here. It's just a little bit right here, a little bit right here. So I'm just gonna take a little bigger sanding roll to this and just chase it all, get in there, and we'll be done with the exhaust. The exhaust is much faster to do than the intake. Well, there we go. We have a finished exhaust. You know, it's not completely polished, but I'll tell you what, uh, it is definitely good enough. I mean, you don't have to get a mirror finish, finish on it because once hot air and exhaust and flames start blowing through this, it is not going to be a mirror finish for very long. And that's it for your exhaust. Next time, we're going to move on to the intake and peace out.